Hi, this is Julia and the Space Daily News Channel. The main purpose of NASA's Artemis 1 mission is to conduct the first test launch of its huge space launch system rocket with the Orion spacecraft. But that is not the only goal of this mission. The space launch system rocket will also have to launch 10 smaller CubeSat satellites. And some of its secondary payloads will go far beyond the Earth-Moon system. The Near-Earth Asteroid Scout mission, for example, will send a CubeSat with a solar sail to an asteroid that will be examined in detail. As the target selected asteroid 2020 GE, measured about 18 meters across, which orbits the Sun with a period of 368 days. To reach it, the satellite will use the Moon's gravitational support and its huge 86 square meter solar sail. It is expected that the spacecraft NIA Scout will approach the asteroid at a distance of about 1.5 km in 2023, where it will take pictures of the asteroid. Also, it will study asteroid's size and shape, the parameters of its rotation and surface properties. The CubeSat's camera will take images with a resolution of less than 10 cm per pixel. The mission is interesting because asteroids smaller than 100 meters have never before been studied at close range. In addition, the mission will help demonstrate solar sail technology for long-distance space travel. Also aboard the Space Launch System rocket will be the first deep space biological experiment satellite as a secondary payload. One of the CubeSats dubbed BioSentinel will carry yeast cells. The satellite will have to enter orbit around the Sun far beyond the Earth's magnetic field, where there is no protection from cosmic radiation. East cells have similar biological mechanisms to human cells and also carry genetic information in double strands of DNA, so they were chosen as test material for radiation experiments. The East cells will begin their journey in a dry state. When the CubeSat is out of range of Earth's magnetic field, Mission personnel will activate the East and study the effects of cosmic radiation on them for 12 months. At the same time, two more identical experiments will be conducted aboard the International Space Station and on Earth. Scientists plan to use the data from the study to plan manned missions beyond low Earth orbit, where astronauts are exposed to harmful cosmic radiation. The Space Launch System rocket will also launch two satellites aimed at finding water on the Moon the Lunar Ice Cube and the Lunar Polar Hydrogen Mapper. The first satellite, weighing about 14 kg, will carry a NASA instrument called the Broadband Infrared High Resolution Compact Spectrometer, which will map the presence of water on the lunar surface, as well as in the lunar exosphere. The Lunar Ice Cube will also test a new ion drive to orbit about 100 km above the lunar surface. The second Lunar Polar Hydrogen Mapper satellite, also weighing about 14 kg, will study previously identified deposits of water ice at the Moon's south pole. It will use two neutron spectrometers to map near-surface hydrogen deposits within one meter. As a result, scientists will be able to produce the most detailed map of water ice at the Moon's south pole to date. Also going into space will be a small spacecraft CubeSat Equilius which was developed by the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. Its mission is to study the cosmic radiation surrounding the Earth thanks to images of the plasma atmosphere of our planet. Interestingly, the satellite will use ordinary water as a fuel. The spacecraft will carry 1.5 kg of water, which will be heated by heat from the communication components of the device. Another Japanese satellite, Omotenashi, planned to be launched by Space Launch System, is expected to demonstrate the use of small, cost-effective lunar landers to explore the lunar surface. The Omotenashi mission will land the smallest lunar lander to date, with a scientific payload consisting of radiation monitor and an accelerometer. It will use an air cushion about 50 cm in diameter for a semi-rigid landing to minimize impact. The Space Launch System will also launch the Team Miles satellite, designed for deep space navigation. It will use plasma engines to travel a distance of at least 4 million kilometers from Earth, where it will have to test its software-defined radio system to communicate with Earth. In addition, the Italian satellite Argo Moon will go into space, 
which will serve an auxiliary function. Its task is to document the work of the intermediate cryogenic stage of the Space Launch System rocket in action. The American Cube SP satellite will also be launched to track radiation and determine space weather. And another satellite will be launched to remotely probe the lunar surface. All data collected by the Artemis 1 mission's secondary payload will contribute to future missions to the Moon and beyond. NASA plans that Artemis 1 will begin an ambitious program of exploration of our planet's satellite. Space Daily News. Like, share and subscribe.